This chapter is about the escapement. The energy coming from the battle, transmitted by the gear train, arrives to this little mechanism. As it's too small to show it to you, I will use this supersized model here. We speak about the escapement wheel and the lever. And this little lever releases one piece after the other one in a controlled way, step by step. This regular movement to trigger one tooth after the other one, unfortunately, doesn't happen by itself. We need some help. And now we are back to our apple. Remember? But of course it's not the best way. I will show you a second supermodel. Wait. Here we are. We have a much better supermodel. This is what we call a balance wheel here, which does the same like a pendulum with the apple. And to replace the earth gravity, we need a little spring called a hairspring. This is the regulating part of our watch, giving the rhythm of the tic-tac, tic-tac, tic-tac. The regular oscillations of the balance wheel regulate the speed at which the gear train rotates. The more regular this oscillation is, the more precise the watch will be. Let me sum up for you. In every mechanical movement, we have three main parts. The energy part, the transmission, and the regulating part. Of course, watchmakers distinguish seven parts instead of three. But for us, it's good enough at the moment to understand what happens in a mechanical movement. Here is a well-finished and even skeletonized movement. This one has exactly the same structure like we just saw before than this little ultra thin movement here. I find it amazing. That's it for today. I hope this overview helped you to better understand the principle of a mechanical watch movement. And perhaps now you would like to know even more about the fascinating world of fine watchmaking. Thank you. Thank you.